Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Kelvin from Make3DComics.com and BlackSunComics.com and this is part one of my tutorial series entitled Character Creation in Daz Studio. In this video we'll be discussing selecting a base figure. Stay tuned. Okay, so before I get into the meat of this video, I'd like to start off with just a little bit of a disclaimer. I just want to say that this is my process for character creation. It's not the process. It's just my way of doing things. It's a process that I've kind of tweaked and modified over time, and it's what works for me. So with that being said, leverage the information in the video that's relevant to you and how you work, and just ignore everything else. There's no cookie cutter solution to doing this. So let's begin. What is a base figure? So if you're new to Daz Studio, you might not understand what a base figure is. Basically, a base figure is a virtual 3D representation of a human being that can be shaped using what are called morphs. And think of morphs like this. So you have a character, if you want to make them taller, use a morph to make them taller. If you want their nose to be bigger or smaller, use a morph to achieve that. A base figure is necessary for character creation in Daz Studio. So if you want to make human looking characters, you need to have a base figure. That's how important they are. The base figure that I happen to use is named Genesis. For short, that's G1 because it's the first generation of Genesis. And it looks like well, it looks like this picture right here. I mean, you can see it's very generic. There's not much to it. And that's kind of the point. The idea is you take this and you turn it into something that suits whatever you need. There are a number of popular base figures that are out. It's not just Genesis. Genesis is the one that, that I've chosen. But I'm going to list some of the more popular ones here. There's Victoria 4 and Michael 4. There's Genesis 1. Genesis 2 female and male, and those are two different figures. And there's Genesis 3 female and Genesis 3 male. Once again, two different figures. This is by no means an exhaustive list. These are just the base models, the base figures, and then from these base figures, you can get what are called add-ons to kind of customize them so you don't have to spend an extraordinary amount of time morphing and shaping and tweaking and customizing. There's tons of base figures and in order to get a grasp of all of them all you really need to, need to do is go to Daz's website you'll see here I have Monique 6 and this is for the Genesis 2 female uh, there's Darius 6 for Genesis 2 male and I'll just go down the list there's Gia 7 there's Freak 5 She Freak Scott Lilith Michael 7 Stephanie 6 Ico 6 Hero 4, or Hyro 4, I'm not sure how that's pronounced. David 5, Olympia, Leo 7, Isabella, Mei Lin 7, Gianni 6, The Girl, The Guy, Isabella, Victoria 7, and that's not all of them. There's there's tons more. I haven't even gotten into the, the legacy ones. But the, the point is there's a, an overwhelming choice. So how do you how do you choose? Yeah, so why did I select Genesis? I'll, I'll get into that now. Genesis is a, the Genesis figure can be modified to achieve the desired look for any project that you're working on. So it's highly customizable. And this is what really attracted me to Genesis. I could turn it into a male or female or even some kind of humanoid monster alien looking type thing. Well, whatever really I can imagine, I can turn Genesis into. Um, and as an example here, you saw the, the base Genesis figure, and that's what I used to create this character for my comic Black Sun, uh, Ashiri, um, who's a, a Kaimana priestess. So, you know, through customizing Genesis through Morse, I'm able to create characters for my book. In addition to that, Genesis can be turned into a male or a female, so it's very versatile. The newer generations of Genesis can't do that. You have one Genesis figure that's for male and another Genesis figure that's for female. You can also transfer Legacy, Michael 4, and Victoria 4. That, that's what the M4 and the V4 stand for. So Michael 4 and Victoria 4 morphs using the Generation X plugin. And clothing made for Michael 4 and Victoria 4 will fit to Genesis automatically using the AutoFit tool. 
Okay, so why is any of this important? If you're new to Daz Studio, what I just talked about might be total gibberish and it might not make any sense. So let me give that a bit of context right now. Here are the advantages of using Genesis. Having one base figure that can be transformed into a male or female character saves you money as a creator. If you're not familiar with Daz Studio's business model, the, the software is free to download and free to use but the content costs money. So before where you had to, where you would have had to have uh, purchased a male base figure and then a female base figure, with Genesis, you don't have to do that. You just have the one base figure that can be transformed into a male, female, monster, or whatever else you might happen to need for your specific project. Model shapes and clothing that were originally created for Michael 4 and Victoria 4 can be used on Genesis. And this basically means that your existing Michael 4 and Victoria 4 content library doesn't become obsolete. Now, in saying this, I realize that these are only advantages if you already have a library of legacy content. If you're completely new to Daz Studio, you might be better off going with some of the newer base figures like Genesis 2 or Genesis 3. I actually haven't used them myself, so if you're out there watching this video and you've used them, maybe you can attest to this. Let us know in the comments below. But I, I'm told that the new figures offer more detail and they look a bit more realistic. So if you're going for that hyper-realistic look that Daz is typically known for, you might be better off going with some of the, the newer models like Genesis 3 and uh, Genesis 2. For myself, hyper-realistic uh, renders is not really my goal. I'm going for a more stylized look. Really what I do is just take the base render from Daz Studio and then slap that into Photoshop and do a whole bunch of photo manipulation to get it to look the way that, that I want. So once again, this speaks to the disclaimer that I said at the beginning. This is a process that really works for, for me. And in telling you what works for me, you can leverage the parts of it that might work for you and disregard the parts of it that won't work for you. So with all that said, that's it for, for this video. Next time we'll create a character together. You can kind of look over my shoulder and see how I use Genesis and how I customize it to create the characters that I use for my comic Black Sun. Speaking of which, if you haven't already, please visit blacksuncomics.com uh, where you can get your copy of issue number one of Black Sun The Longest Night. If you like this video, press like. If you found the information useful, subscribe now. Visit us on social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And we'll catch you next time. Take care. Peace.